Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are here to talk to you about trapezoid rule approximations for definite integrals. There are a lot of ways probably by now that you've learned to do integration and in definite integrals if you're watching this video. You've learned them by definition, U substitution, all these that we have here. There are a lot of ways to do them by hand. Unfortunately, even with all the ways that we know, not everything that we see as an integral can be integrated by hand using any functions that we've probably seen in mathematics up till this point. These are very simple looking integrals that don't look super complicated compared to some of the things you've probably seen already, but these cannot actually be integrated uh, using elementary functions by hand. So the question is, what do we do when finding our area under the curve is very unfriendly? And we want to go back to thinking about what we used to do before we learned about definite integrals. We did something like a Riemann sum. Don't run off yet. We're not doing Riemann sums. So we might have done something like a left-handed sum before, where we take rectangles underneath the curve and we base their heights upon the left endpoint and where it meets the curve. Uh, we also may have done something where we look at the height of some step, some rectangle, and we base it on where the right endpoint meets the function itself, and then add up a bunch of rectangles that way. Um, we probably noticed that in many of our examples, we got where one was an underestimate and one was an overestimate. Here you can see that my, uh, my left-handed sum is always an underestimate. Uh, for the curve. We always have some space above that is not represented here. Uh, my right hand sum for this example you can see here is always an overestimate. I always have some rectangle actually above and beyond what I would have for the area under each part of the curve. So the way that we'll do our next approximation, which is a better approximation, more like a midpoint sum was if you ever did those, is something like a trapezoid approximation. So if you can imagine taking a line and drawing it from this point to this point and getting a straight line there and from this point then to this point and getting a straight line and that point to that point and getting a straight line and we go all the way down the curve then we will actually get trapezoids and this is the idea of a trapezoid approximation. It will certainly be the case as it was with Riemann sums and rectangles that the more trapezoids we use, the more accurate our approximation for the area under the curve is. So here we're going to look at how we approximate the area under a curve uh, from A to B. In other words, the integral of f of x dx uh, with bounds A and B. So the first thing we're going to do is we will break it up into a certain number of trapezoids. Usually that number is called n. n for number of trapezoids. In this picture you can see that n is 6 here. And normally we'll break it up so that our interval from a to b is broken up into even pieces. So it would be 6 even pieces here. But in general you'll take that a to b interval and divide it by the number of trapezoids you're using, which would be b minus a over n. And we'll call that delta x. That will be the width for each trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is going to be the width of the trapezoid times the average of the height. That's the formula for area of a trapezoid. So just arbitrarily choosing one of my trapezoids and looking at finding the area so that the width is always going to be delta x. The average of the heights will be the average of the endpoint heights. Uh, this left endpoint height is the y value that's above x1, in other words f of x1, and the right endpoint height is going to be the y value above x2 here. So that will be f of x2 or the y value uh, when we plug in x2. So our area for our second trapezoid will be delta x which is the width times the average of the heights which will be those two y values added up and divided by 2. The average of two numbers is add and divide by 2. So now we'll start to build our formula for the trapezoid rule. If you look at our first trapezoid, uh, obviously our width is delta x and our endpoints, our left endpoint is x0, our right endpoint is x1. So I find the y values by plugging x0 and x1 into the formula. So we'll get those y values, we'll divide by two, that's the average height. So it's width times the average height. That's the area of the first trapezoid. We do the same thing for the second trapezoid. The left endpoint is x1, the right endpoint is x2. So we'll plug those in, get y values and average those. We do a similar thing for trapezoids three, four, 
five, and six in this example because I'm using n equals six. And then we might start to notice some things that are in common for the area of each trapezoid. So first thing we might notice is that some of these y values are repeating in our expression if we were to add these all together. Um, you'll notice that we're only using the left endpoint of the first trapezoid at x zero. We're only using that once. So that only occurs once in my sum if I were to add all of these up. The other one that occurs only once is the right endpoint of the last trapezoid. So this f of x6 only occurs once. That y value when you plug in x6 will only be used once. Every other y value, f of x1, f of x2, f of x3, etc., all the way through f of x5, are going to appear twice in our formula because f of x1 is the y value at the right endpoint of the first trapezoid, but it is also the left endpoint height of the second trapezoid. A similar thing happens for f of x2. It occurs twice because it is the right endpoint of our second trapezoid, but it is also the height of the left endpoint of our third trapezoid. So everything between the first y value and the last y value is actually going to appear twice in our formula. And if you'll notice, each of the terms that we're going to have here, if we add all these up, will have a delta x and they also have a one half. So in our formula, we will go ahead and factor out front of all these terms a delta x over two. Here you can see at the bottom our formula for the trapezoid rule. Now this is just my formula if I have six subintervals. Obviously, if you were doing something like 10 subintervals, you would have an f of x sub zero here. You'd have an f of x sub 10, and then you'd have two of every y value in between. We'll always have delta x over two that we factor out of each of those terms for our trapezoids that we found. Uh, remember to find your delta x, you will take the entire interval uh, a to B, you'll take that distance, which is B minus A, and then you'll divide by N, which is however many intervals you're told to use or are deciding to use. Uh, a will always double as your first x value, x is zero, and B will always end up being your last x value. In our case here, B was x six, which was our last value because we were using six. Okay, check out our examples video for trapezoid rule where we work through a couple of actual trapezoid approximations. We will see you in the next video.